Please stand for the words of our King. Our Gospel this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. So far, text. Please be seated. Your Christian friends, I think most of you have seen a video that featured this woman. Kind of an action shot. This is taken from the Baltimore riots. That mother was Toya Graham. She was watching TV and saw her masked son, whom she knew it was him. I don't know how she knew it was him because it's kind of hard to tell, but she figured out it was him. She went down, found him, pulled him out of the crowd, and starts beating him. And I would say she's being a good mother at this point because she is worried about the security and safety of her son. Now, she has been accused of child abuse for actually striking her son. I would say child abuse is when you see your son on TV participating in a riot that could end in his death and not doing anything. She's a good mother. At least in this instance, she was. There are a lot of things that we might see that look a little rough, and yet we would all agree that they're good. We'd call it tough love. Our God talks about love a lot in this text, and yet he's speaking to his disciples and the night he was betrayed. And so it doesn't sound that tough, and yet as you flesh it out on this Mother's Day, you're going to see that Jesus is alive in you. And the love that we show is love that we can show only because he showed that love to us first. Let's look once more just at the first few verses. Again, this is the second half of the vine and branches discourse where he's talking about that relationship that we have and how we can bear fruit. And on the second half, he actually talks about how he's inside of us. We're his friends. We're very close. And that's the reason for all of this fruit that we're going to bear. Verse 9, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's command and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. That sounds pretty easy, right? Love everyone just as Jesus loved us. Not so much, first of all. Remain in my love. How do we do that? Obey my commands. His command is, love each other as I have loved you. And if you do all that, your joy may be complete. Yeah, that's a tall order. I do not love anyone perfectly. And on this Mother's Day, I don't know any mothers that love their children perfectly. The mothers that I talk to confess that they have a little bit of guilt because they're not perfect. And it's terrible, whether you're a father or a mother, to see things that you know you should do, gifts from God, something as precious as a child, and we can't live up to it. And sometimes some of the things that condemn us are portions of Scripture that are meant to encourage us. How many of you have ever read Proverbs 31? You probably, yeah, a lot of you have seen it. 
It's this portion of scripture that describes the ideal woman, not just mother. This woman carries out business at the city gate. All of her children are clothed in scarlet. They're respected. She is industrious, not wasting any time at all. And at the end of the day, her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Okay, that's only one woman, right? Now, which one of you is this? Surpass them all. None of you, of course. Could be. Lower the bar, please. None of you are perfect. Think of the times when you've let people down. Are you proud of all of the chunks of your motherness? Could you have done better? Yeah, all of us could have. So we got to get it out there. Anytime we try to hold it in and kind of guard ourselves, saying, I'm really a good mother. You are. But it's okay to admit your failings before your God. He knows them all anyway. I want to introduce you to someone who knows a lot about failing. Have, have you guys seen this, this face before? Any of you? This is earlier this month. This is Erwin Horwitz. He's having a bad day, if you can't tell. Erwin Horwitz is caught as he walks out of Texas A&M. He's a business professor, and he's the first professor in the history of Texas A&M to fail his whole class. Yeah. Um, he is quoted as saying, this class is unique. I have never failed a class. It is very rare that I fail students. Sometimes learning incorporates tough love. Now, he failed everyone because he thought that none of them did a good job. Of course, there's an investigation pending by the school. And I don't know if every child will actually be failed. Certain requirements go into process. But I thought it was unique that this man actually stood up and said, you know what, none of you are going to pass my class. And I'm going to say to not just the mothers in the room, the words of the Apostle Paul, all of you, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's not bad. I mean, that's horrible, and yet I don't want you to run away from it screaming. I want you to take a moment and look into the mirror of God's holy law and see what you are. It's not necessarily a pretty picture. And yet when you see that you are not perfect and that you need your God, this is where he steps in. This is where you can see that Jesus is alive in you. You need Him so desperately, and He's right there. Verse 13, Greater love has no one than this, that He lay down His life for His friends. That is Angel. Angel Perez. Angel Perez was born on April 4th. There are a lot of cute babies in this world, but what makes Angel Perez unique is that his mother, Carla Perez, died, she was brain dead, on February 8th. She had a massive brain hemorrhage in Waterloo, Nebraska, when she was just at home. And she was brain dead, and yet she was able to be kept alive on life support for 54 days. Until her baby, her son, Angel, was strong enough to be born. Now I think all of you, every mom in this room would have done the same thing for their child. My goodness, that's what moms do. You give up your life for your child right now. That's easy, you might say as a mother. Of course you wouldn't do that. Your God, that's Carla, your God gave up his life for you knowing that you were his enemy at one point. You can think of the worst of the worst. That's not it. And yet the love of your God is divine. Different. It's unconditional. No matter what you've done in the past, no matter how horrible of a mom you may have been, no matter how horrible you may have screwed up in your life, it doesn't matter. Jesus died for you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. And yet Paul says it this way, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And he didn't just die so that you would live. 
He died to take away your mommy guilt. He paid for it. He died to take away all of the sin that you have piled up in your life, all the sin that you will commit today and the rest of your life. He died so that you will never worry about going to hell to pay for the eternal consequences of your actions because He suffered for those in your place. Because He did this, He alone has the right to call you His friend. And that completely changes everything. Hear these next verses. You are my friend if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my Father. I have made known to you. You're working with God, not for God. You're working with God. I mean, when you think of the term friend, it kind of, I mean, how many of you have Facebook friends? And how meaningless is that? I have, I think, 500. I, I tried to get as many as I could in a month, and I stopped at about 600 because people in different Chinese characters started to befriend me, and I couldn't understand anything. I thought, you know what, this is getting weird. And so I kind of paired it back to the people that I actually knew. It's not difficult to get friends. And so when God talks about being a friend, this is a very close connection. Someone with whom you share your deepest secrets and your most important work. Let me introduce you to this gentleman. This is uh, Michael Buelna. Uh, he is a police officer in California. And a number of years ago, he was going about his business and he heard a noise coming from a dumpster. And he went over to the dumpster and he found a baby still covered in mucus also with trash and gravel sticking to him. He picked up the baby, and the baby wasn't breathing, so he administered a rescue breath, and the baby responded. Ambulance, of course, was called, and a number of years later, this is Robin Barton on the left, the police officer's on the right. They had the chance to meet for the first time. The police officer tried to adopt the child, but he didn't in time. I don't know exactly how all of that works with DSS, but another family adopted him, and he had a wonderful upbringing, and he had the chance to finally meet the man. And it was awesome to see. Now, he was able to rescue a baby from a dumpster, and I, a police officer serve our community in wonderful ways, and they've been getting a bad rap lately, but please do thank them for their service to our community and the order that they bring to our society. That is from our God also. I don't know if you're ever going to have the opportunity to show love like that. That's pretty awesome. But I think all of you do have the opportunity to rescue someone who is caught in a sin. Or at the very least, rescue someone who's having a bad day. That may not sound like much. And yet you have no idea what it will mean when you share God's love. That's not always so bad either. Just because you don't know the effect of your love doesn't mean that you should not keep on doing it. One of the favorite hymns in the hymnal is kind of a dog to sing, but the words are awesome. It is about the sower and the seed. It's about the sower who goes out and he says, oh, what of that and what of that? He does not care where his seed lands. That's what he does. Christian, do you honestly, necessarily, Care where your love goes and what effect it has. I think all of us would like to see an outcome like that, and yet that's not the reason why you do it. The reason why you do it is because Jesus lives in you, and you are his friend, and you know his work. When you start as that, that is a completely selfless, divine reason for you to love. And that's awesome. It changes the world. Listen to these last verses. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Moms, did you ever realize that God chose you to be the mother of your children? On the days when you wonder exactly if you know what you're doing, little children do not come with instructions. 
It doesn't matter. God equips the person to whom He gives this job to. And so when you go to Him, we sang, what a friend we have in Jesus. That's great. The rest of the hymn is all about prayer. Talk to Him. God, I'm having a lousy day. I don't even know if I can be a mom. Help. And He will. He sends His Spirit to sustain you. To lift you up when you're having a bad day. So that you will know that, well, I can tell them about their God. And I can tell them how much He loves them. All of you can do that because when Jesus talks about fruit, fruit that will last. You ever think about that? What does it mean to do something that's going to last? What do powerful people do so that people will remember them? They make a monument. Walk through Washington, D.C. There are statues everywhere. Go into the Capitol building. Each state gets to give two statues of somebody important to their state. Okay, that's fine to remember. But one day, uh, those are going to crumble. I don't know when. And what more, when my kids walked through there, they didn't know half the statues and they didn't care. Fruit that will last is different. It doesn't involve an obelisk or a statue of you. It involves the love that you pass on to your child that will carry them all the way to eternity. So that you're going to see them one day. You've heard it said that you can't take it with you. It's not entirely true. Your children are the only thing that you can take with you. Not, of course, by your grace and power, but by the love that you share with them that connects them to their Savior also, just like it connected you. That is truly powerful, and that is love that lasts. And that is how Jesus is in you, and you get to share that with the rest of the world. Dear friends, on this Mother's Day, even if you're not a mom, know that God's love rests on you and empowers you to bear fruit. Fruit that lasts. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We praise our God with the Create in Me found in your worship folder.